Umagang kay ganda, si Jesus ang kasama. This is Pastor Tess Cruz, your Friday devotional leader. Good morning. Umagang kay ganda. This has been negated by a biblical or some I am completed. I am rich. Let the Holy Spirit be our guide. Smile now, Pooja. Dear friends, together let us approach God's throne of grace. Lord of life, we do not know the face of the future any more than your disciples did. Like them, we may have many questions on how we are going to live, how we are going to bear witness. Like them with thirst for the spring waters of the Spirit to inspire us in our living and to give us a heart language in our testimony. You have been raised in glory that we might rise with dignity. You live in power that we might live in Jesus. You are present everywhere that we might be fully present in our own lives. This we believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Our special number, please listen to our special number today. Come 
scripture reading is from Acts chapter 1, verses 15 to 17, 21 to 26. I will be reading the Good News translation. A few days later, there was a meeting of the believers, about 120 in all, and Peter stood up to speak. My friends, he said, the scripture had to come true, in which the Holy Spirit, speaking through David, made a prediction about Judas, who was the guide for those who arrested Jesus. Judas was a member of our group, for he had chosen to have a part in our work. So then someone must join us as a witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. He must be one of the men who were in our group during the whole time that the Lord Jesus traveled about with us, beginning from the time John preached his message of baptism until the day Jesus was taken up from us to heaven. So they proposed two men, Joseph, who was called Barsabbas, also known as Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know the thoughts of everyone, so show us which of these two you have chosen. To serve as an apostle in the place of Judas, who left to go to the place where he belongs. Then they drew lots to choose between the two men, and the one chosen was Matthias, who was added to the group of 11 apostles. This is the word of God for the beautiful people of God. The ascension of Jesus Christ into heaven is one of the most important events recorded in the New Testament. 
But though it occupies a vital place in scripture, it doesn't get a lot of attention today compared to Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. Jesus ascended into heaven means that he went up, was raised up, or brought up into heaven. And this took place 40 days after the resurrection. After his ascension, the community of believers had to deal with his absence. So we find a community or an early church wrestling with communal life in the light of Jesus' bodily absence. The early church found her natural leadership in the apostles whom Jesus had appointed. In Luke's gospel, this twelve accompanied Jesus as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God. Jesus also gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Although many people, many women and children included, accompanied Jesus as disciples throughout his ministry, the apostles took on a special significance as close friends of Jesus. They were important not only for the individual roles they played, but also for their representation of the 12 tribes of Israel who the Lord will restore. Thus, they were frequently called simply the Twelve. Our scripture reading today is the first recorded faith crisis of the early church. What to do with the betrayer, Judas? Judas was one of the Twelve. He who was one of them and shared in the ministry with them abandoned his office. The twelve then became incomplete. I can imagine that Judas' betrayal of Jesus left a deep wound in early Christian communities. His betrayal indelibly marked his name, his history, and the church's memory. Judas, the one who betrayed Jesus. And the reason Judas' betrayal cut so deep lies in the other way that all four Gospels identify him as one of the twelve. He who is one of them and shared in the ministry with them. And this we can find in Acts chapter 1 verse 17. He abandoned his office. The twelve then became incomplete. I can imagine the Judas' betrayal of Jesus left a deep wound in early Christian communities. His betrayal indelibly marked his name, his history, and the church's memory. Judas as the one who betrayed Jesus. And the reason Judas' betrayal cut so deep lies in the other way, that all four Gospels identify him as one of the twelve. Powerful opponents might have called for Jesus' execution. Pilate might have sentenced him to death. Roman soldiers might have nailed him to the cross, but they were outsiders. Judas was one of the most inside of the insiders. And our passage relates a story of Peter, another of the twelve, helping the community regroup naming the pain of betrayal, Judas was one of us. And when Jesus sent out disciples to preach, teach, and heal, Judas was among them, except for John's allegation that Judas was both betrayer and embezzler. The Gospels offer no mention that prior to Gethsemane, Judas was any less gifted or effective than any other of the twelve. So how do individuals or communities recover when a gifted spiritual leader goes dramatically astray? Does betrayal negate everything else that Judas did? Mababaliwala na ba ang lahat ng kabutihang kanyang nagawa? If someone in the first century 
were to look back on a lesson, a teaching, an act of healing performed by Judas. How would they put it into perspective or assess its value, its truth? In our own day, many individuals and communities face the same emotional aftermath following a radical betrayal of trust. What comes is anger, grief, confusion, loss of confidence in one's judgment, or enduring suspicion of other people's reliability. How can one help them move forward? Peter insisted that a replacement for Judas be chosen at all. Bakit kailangan maghanap ng kapalit ni Judas? They had to complete the symbolic connection to Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. And by maintaining, maintaining this connection, Acts makes clear that God's kingdom is for both the embryonic community of the Jew and Gentile believers in the way, and the Jews as the original covenant people of Israel. The church realized that they needed to replace Judas. But they wanted to act carefully when selecting another leader after Judas' actions destroyed a community's sense of identity and integrity. Hindi sila dapat magkamali sa pagpili sa panahong yun. Subalit kung magbabalik tanaw tayo, hindi ba si Jesus ang tumawag kay Judas? And Peter reasoned from Scripture that Judas' unfaithfulness was a necessary component in God's design. It had to be fulfilled. And this group knew that they needed to replace Judas with someone with impeccable credentials, one who accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, from verses 21 to 22. And this person's commitment must have remained intact beyond betrayal and death, unlike Judas, into the time of resurrection. Such a one can become a witness with us to Jesus' resurrection and embody the possibility of resurrection and new life within the community as well. They knew, second, that the replacement must be made after extended prayer involving the whole community. Prayer offers its own healing, especially for a wounded group seeking restoration. The community that prays together heals together. Throughout Luke's gospel, God has shown the divine power to make a way through oppression, betrayal, rejection, and death. Now, in the selection of a 12 apostle, God shows that God can make a way even through politics. There was no politicking or competing in that room of 120 people for the possession vacated by Judas. They decided to find a suitable leader by the casting of lots. The casting of lots was an accepted practice in first century Jewish and Christian communities. Bishop Danny Arichea on his Facebook wall gave an extensive explanation on how the casting of lots was done. I encourage you to read it. Even though Matthias is ultimately chosen by the apostles through the casting of lots, the Spirit elected Paul to carry the apostolic mantle left vacant by Judas. Clearly, the criteria established by Peter and seconded by apostolic consent, namely, that the one to replace Judas ought to have been witness to the entire ministry of Jesus from the beginning was not seconded by the Holy Spirit. Luke only ever mentions Matthias here in the book of Acts. The Holy Spirit chose Paul as the 12th apostle. 
And in order for Paul to ground Christianity from the outside as the one who was not a member of Christ's inner circle, the circle had to be broken from within by means of an act of terrifying betrayal. Many communities today would not see the Holy Spirit guiding such a crucial decision through the casting of lots. Hindi na po uso yun ngayon. No? But the lot is the least important, least required element of their process then or our process now. Whether by lot, interview, or committee commi vote, or by episcopal selection or appointment, the way forward that offers the surest prospect of new life after betrayal focuses on listening and discerning through extended communal prayer, finding people of rich experience and deep integrity, and ending with some sign that this next person is called by God, however a given community makes that determination. The scars left by Judas or others who betray and damage those around them will remain. But they do not need to define or stop a community's ministry. God will make a way for people of the resurrection to rise. What lessons can we take from this passage? First, the primary purpose of the church is witness and that everyone in church must serve this purpose. From verses 21 to 22, so then someone must join us as a witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. He must be one of the men, I will include women, who were in our group during the whole time that the Lord Jesus traveled about with us, beginning from the time John preached his message of baptism until the day Jesus was taken up from us to heaven. The role of the early church was to live into this witness vocation even at the cost of her life. The replacement of Judas, therefore, was not primarily about the church's self-maintenance. It was about the church's urgent need to be witnesses to Jesus' risen person. In looking for key leaders to the church, we should ask ourselves, Will they, our prospect leaders, witness to the life and ministry of Jesus by their words and actions? And in putting a pastor or church worker to a church, will he or she become a living witness of Jesus? Will the church worker lead a church to witness for Jesus? Pumipili ba tayo ng leaders natin base sa kanilang angking yaman? katalinuhan o kasikatan? Magiging saksi ba sila sa pag-ibig ng Diyos o pananatiliin lang nila ang status ko sa simbahan? As witness of Jesus Christ, the church connects the early church's self-understanding with the narratives and history of Israel. It also stresses the agency of God. The church stresses the importance of God's leading in the world. Second, the church must show how her witness will be accomplished through God's leading. Verse 24, then they prayed, Lord, you know the thoughts of everyone. So show us which of these two you have chosen. Keywords, show us. Before they were called Christians, the early church called itself the way. As witnesses of Jesus' ministry and resurrection, the apostles and disciples followed the way that Jesus had taught them. They engaged in service for one another, living into the end-breaking of the kingdom of God in community together. 
the church leans into its trust of God's goodness. They search the scriptures and they commit to communal practices of prayer. They acknowledge the limits and decide criteria for moving forward that center their witness vocation. And then they cast lots, reframing the lots, cast for Jesus clothing, an act meant to humiliate with last lots cast to strengthen the witness of his disciples, honoring his final command. To follow the example of the early church is not to commit to a rigid practice of decision making or a particular structure. It is to recognize our own need to lean on divine guidance and to trust God's ability to speak and to faithfully act in response. Finally, we have to see God's way for God's church. God in Christ Jesus is a God who continually makes a way. And this pioneering continues in Acts 2 when God pours out God's own spirit on Pentecost. The inbreaking of God's kingdom can be spectacular indeed. But in this moment, in this story, God's way is quieter. God works through the human initiative or ordinary people like Peter and Matthias and all those gathered together. Through their quiet deliberation in an upstairs room or the upper room, God sets the groundwork not only for Pentecost but for the whole gospel mission. In Jesus' absence, the apostles and disciples together are charged with being the way. They bring the hope and power of the kingdom of God into communities and to people for whom the trials of religious and political oppression may have make it appear as though there is no way. Today, we disciples of Jesus are the way. Living in light of resurrection, we are called to follow our God who always makes a way even though there is betrayal through death and even through politics. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we pray that you will accompany us in the days and the months and the years ahead as we go through the challenges of this pandemic. Dear Lord, show us the way, how we can survive, how we can overcome this pandemic. Show us the way, how we can be true to our calling as Christians, as disciples of Jesus, as his followers who can overcome death, defeat, and betrayal. Dear Lord, show us the way, how we can give glory to your name, not only today, but always. In Jesus' name, amen. My dear friends, this is my last telecast of Umagang Keganda. Thank you very much for supporting me in this ministry. I ask you to support me in the future, not necessarily here in Knox, but in another church where I will be assigned. Please pray for me and my family as well. I love all of you. Thank you for your love and your generosity. Amen. Umagang kay ganda. This is Pastor Tess Cruz signing off. Bye-bye.